Kingdom Blessings. I'm Pastor Sheila. Are you ready to be blessed, revived, and refreshed? Well, it's time for Moed Shel Raga, the appointed time of refreshing. Come on, let's prepare our hearts and our minds for the Word of God. It's the time of refreshing. Ooh. It's time for the word, the word of God. Time to be blessed and refresh for in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy 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 at his right hand pleasures forevermore Moet Shilaraga Moet Shilaraga Moet Shilaraga the appointed time of refreshing. Ooh, I want to abide in Him. Let His words abide in me. I can ask what I will, and it'll be given unto me. Da 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 da. Da 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 ba da ba ba da ba da 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 Come on, let's go. is coming from Colossians chapter 1 verses 9 to 14. I'm reading from the Life Application Study Bible. It says, so we have continued praying for you ever since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you a complete understanding of what he wants to do in your lives. And we ask him to make you wise with spiritual wisdom. Then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord and you will continually do good, kind things for others. All the while, you will learn to know God better and better. We also pray that you will be strengthened with his glorious power so that you will have all the patience and endurance you need. May you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father who has enabled you to share the inheritance that belongs to God's holy people who live in the light. For he has rescued us from the one who rules in the kingdom of darkness, and he has brought us into the kingdom of his dear son. God has purchased our freedom with his blood and has forgiven all our sins. Hallelujah. And the note says, Paul was exposing a heresy in the Colossian church that was similar to Gnosticism. Gnostics valued the accumulation of knowledge, but Paul pointed out that knowledge in itself is empty. To be worth anything, it must lead to a changed life and right living. His prayer for the Colossians had two dimensions. First, that they might have complete understanding of what God wants to do in their lives 
and that they might be wise with spiritual wisdom. And second, that they would continually do good, kind things for others and learn to know God better and better. Knowledge is not merely to be accumulated. It should give us direction for living. Paul wanted the Colossians to be wise, but he also wanted them to use their knowledge. Knowledge of God is not a secret that only a few can discover. It is open to everyone. God wants us to learn more about him and also to put belief into practice by helping others. Sometimes we wonder how to pray for missionaries and other leaders we have never met. Paul had never met the Colossians, but he faithfully prayed for them. His prayers teach us how to pray for others, whether we know them or not. We can request that they, one, understand what God wants them to do. Two, gain spiritual wisdom. Three, honor and please God. Four, continually do good, kind things for others. Five, learn to know God better and better. Six, be strengthened with God's glorious power. Seven, have great patience and endurance. Eight, stay full of Christ's joy. And nine, give thanks always. All believers have these same basic needs. When you don't know how to pray for someone, use Paul's prayer pattern for the Colossians. Paul lists five benefits God gives all believers through Christ. First, he enabled us to share his inheritance. Secondly, he rescued us from Satan's kingdom of darkness and made us his children. Third, he brought us into his eternal kingdom. Four, he purchased our freedom from sin and judgment with his blood. And five, he forgave all our sins. Thank God for what you have received in Christ. The Colossians feared the unseen forces of darkness. But Paul says that true believers have been transferred from darkness to light from slavery to freedom, from guilt to forgiveness, and from the power of Satan to the power of God. We have been rescued from a rebel kingdom to serve the rightful king. Our conduct should reflect our new allegiance. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, beloveds, sons of God, I come to remind you of what Christ has done for us. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. If we confess our faults before him, the word of God tells us that he is faithful and he is just to forgive us of all unrighteousness. As a matter of fact, the Lord is Jehovah Sitkanu, the Lord God, our righteousness. So when he looks at us as believers, those that have surrendered our lives to God, he sees us through the blood of Jesus Christ. He said, as far as the east is from the west, he will remove our sin from us and he will remember them no more. The God who never changes, the God who is immutable, the God that never forgets, chooses to have amnesia. He chooses to forget our sin. He remembers them no more. That's amazing. So, beloveds, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. Hold on to the Lord and constantly, constantly stay before him. Now, I know sometimes you want to pray for people and you don't really know how to pray for them. But Paul gives us the remedy for this. Because he had never met the Colossians. Isn't that interesting? But he said he has never ceased to pray for them. He's always praying for them. And it doesn't matter if we know someone or not. If we know that they are a believer, we don't have to know them. We can always pray for strength. We can always pray that God's will will be revealed in their lives. We can always 
pray that the Lord would cover them in, in the blood of Jesus. We can pray success. We can pray that God will give them endurance when they have to go through certain trials. This is how we ought to pray. Beloved, this is a time that we need to pray. And we need to pray for our brothers and sisters. Now, we live here in America and we have so many freedoms and rights. But there are people that are in other countries that may be giving up their life for the name of Christ. Some people are hiding. They can't even carry Bibles out and open. They can't even meet. They have to sneak around. But we here in America, sometimes many of us are ashamed. But I decree today, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. But it is power, the power of God. Hallelujah. I thank God. I thank God for the prayers of the righteous. They avail much. So won't you join me today in praying for the body of Christ, for praying for our brothers and sisters, that God's will will be done in their lives. Those that you haven't seen before, those that you don't even know their name, but God knows them. And there's no distance in the spirit. Will you pray with me today? Come on, let's pray. Father, Daddy, in the mighty name of Jesus, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving. We enter into your courts with praise. We are thankful unto you and we bless your righteous and holy name for you are so good. Your mercy is everlasting and your truth endures to all generations. Father, you are the God of all nations. You are the God of all creation. So we lift you today. We crown you as Lord, Savior, Master, King of our lives. And because you are our Lord, we say yes to your will and yes to your way. We love you. We bless you. We adore you. There is no other God beside you, for you are the true and the living God. Hallelujah. God, we love you. Now, Father, we pray that you would have mercy upon us according to thy love and kindness, according to thy multitude of grace, mercy, blot out our transgressions, Lord God, every sin, any mar, any blemish, any stain, any wrinkle, take it out, Lord. But we don't want anything that will hinder our relationship with you. Father, we lift up the entire body of Christ. Ah, God. Those that are in Italy, Africa, Japan, the Netherlands, Lord God, Antarctica, Russia, Yugoslavia, God. We pray, God, for those that are in hunger, those that don't have food, Lord God. You know each one name by name. Those that are in remote parts of the earth. We pray those that are in China, those that are crying out for the name of Jesus and those that are suffering and being punished, God, we cry out for them today. May they be strengthened. May they endure. May they not compromise, Lord. We pray right now for the entire body of Christ, wherever they are, for every son of God. Oh God, that we would walk upright, that you would get the glory out of our lives. God, we can do nothing without you. We acknowledge you because you are our king. And because you are our king, we take your kingdom everywhere we go. Father, we just love you. We bless you. We honor you. We thank you for increasing everything that our hands set to. Thank you for increasing our business. Thank you for increasing our ministries. Thank you for increasing, Lord, our spouses and on their jobs and our children, God. We pray for increase. We thank you. We give you glory. We pray, God, that you would just have your way in our lives. We say yes to your will and yes to your way. We will not take down. We will not compromise what we 
will believe the report of the Lord. Every promise in you is yes and amen. Oh God, we love you and we bless you. We adore you. We give you the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you glory, honor, and praise. In the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach. Amen and amen. Well, beloved, this has been Moe Sharada, the appointed time of refreshing. Continue to be blessed, revived, and refreshed. In the presence of the Lord, in his presence. Mm. Da, da, 